Hey y'all, welcome to Craftable Things. I'm Patrice and today we are going to be doing a full wrap on this 30 ounce sublimation tumbler using our Epson EcoTank 2750 that can only print eight and a half inches wide. So I have an Epson EcoTank 2750 and I have this 30 ounce sublimation tumbler. And y'all, if you have a printer that only prints eight and a half inches wide, you may understand the struggle with trying to get this done. So today I am going to be showing you all very quickly how I sub my 30 ounce tumblers using a printer that is not a wide format printer. All right, so we're gonna walk through this. I'm gonna take you over to Creative Fabrica. We are going to find a design that we'll use from their website and we are going to sub this. So let's get started. So now we're inside of Creative Fabrica and I just want to find a Mother's Day Tumblr template that we can use that's gonna be easy for us to print and get this done. So if you are interested, Creative Fabrica has a package for their all access membership for the first month it's only one dollar and each additional month thereafter it is only 19 dollars, and you have access to all of their resources on this website so definitely check them out if you're interested a link will be listed below in the description for you to sign up all right so i'm just gonna look for something that you know I could give away for Mother's Day. Oh, that's cute. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go with this one. I think it's cute. I absolutely love butterflies. So it has butterflies and it has ladybugs and mushrooms. So I definitely love the ladybugs and the butterfly. So this is perfect. So we're just gonna click download and this is going to download onto my computer and I am going to print this out and I will meet you all at the craft table so that we can wrap this tumbler. Now this does include the commercial license, so that is an added bonus of purchasing things from Creative Fabrica. Now we're inside of Adobe Illustrator and I am just going to swiftly walk you all through the process of printing this out. So I want to create a new file. And you can do this inside of any design software. All right, so the size template that I want to use or the size artboard that I want to use, not the template, the artboard, is going to be 11 inches wide by 10 inches high. And I am doing this in inches. And so we are going to click create. And so once we click, click create, the template or the artboard is going to be created, all right? This is the artboard, not the template. So now we're going to actually get ready to make the template for the tumbler. And I've already measured the tumbler. And once we get to the craft table, I will show you how I do that. So I am simply going to select the rectangle shape and I am going to click inside. And so when I measured the tumbler, it measured 10 inches wide by 9.375 high, all right? And so I don't have much overage with this template. It pretty much is going to be a very tight fitted wrap. So I like it like that. Sometimes if you want, you know, you can have some overlap if, you know, that makes you a little more comfortable so that you don't have any gaps in that seam. Okay, so now I am going to simply select the square and I am going to click the draw inside icon. And what I'm going to do is that image that I downloaded from Creative Fabrica, we are just going to place this inside of the square. Okay, so I'm just going to paste it inside and I'm pretty sure we're going to have to resize it. So this is a straight tumbler, so I'm not really worried or concerned about, you know, any taper or anything like that. So this it's a, a regular rectangle, right? So we are going to just resize this. 
and I am going to make sure that it fits inside of the square. So I don't want to make it too small and I'm going to do this. I'm going to kind of stretch it out. This is not going to be a seamless wrap. Right now, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to increase the size or magnify it so you can see it a little bit more than I can see it. And this is what it looks like. So once we click out of the square or the rectangle, this is what we have. So I'm pretty much ready to print this. But before I do, I want to remove that black outline of the template that I have there. So I am going to just click that and I am going to remove that stroke or the outline. And so now we won't have that black line. That's very important because you don't want that black line to print around your image. All right, so we're pretty much done here. And I am going to get ready to print out the template. So to print it out, this is an important step in getting this done. You're going to go to print. And this is the same thing that you would do if you're in any other program for the most part. All right, so I want to make sure that the paper size is selected that I'm going to be using. And it is. I'm using an 8.5 by 11. And I'm just going to go and make sure and set up that that's what we have and we do. Okay, and so next I want to, before I change the color and the print settings, I wanna make sure that I have this correctly tiled. And so we are going to tile this. So to tile in Adobe Illustrator, you're going to click scaling and I want to tile full pages. And so right now what that did is that separated our image into two pages so that we could print the entire image because it is larger than the paper size that we're going to be using. All right. So right now there is zero overlap and the overlap is over here to the right of scaling, but we really do want an overlap. If you don't have any overlap, you risk parts of your image not printing. All right. So I've found really, really good, good success with having point 25 of an inch or a quarter of an inch overlap okay and so for me that works perfectly fine i'm able to piece it together and none of the image is missing all right so it fits perfectly so now i have that selected this is how we're going to do it now if you want to like change how it's cut so let's say you don't want any of the woman in the middle cut you kind of want the other side cut then you can kind of move it around all right, you can do, there's so many different things that you could do. You can, you can decide exactly where you want your cut to be. All right, so I'm just gonna go right here down the cen center of the eyeglasses. So next we're gonna go to setup. And this is going to open the print dialog box. And we want to click on to print settings. And so right here, this is where we are just going to make our color selections, our media type and print quality. So right now I'm going to leave this at plain paper, bright white. We're going to select quality under print quality. And then you wanna make sure you mirror that image. After that, we're going to go to color options. And under color options, I'm going to click advanced settings. So you won't see any of these options if you don't have all of the drivers downloaded onto your printer or onto your computer, whether you're using a Mac or a PC, all right? So next I'm gonna click Advanced Settings, and then I am going to change the mode from Epson Vivid to Adobe RGB. And I am going to change my gamma from a 2.2 to a 1.8. I usually leave it at a 2.2, but these are reds and, and light pinks. So I don't want it to be too dark. I want it to be bright and I get a brighter outcome with the gamma at 1.8. All right, so right now we are pretty much set. We're gonna click print and we are going to print this out onto our Epson Eco Tank 2750 and head to the craft table. All right, guys, so our image has printed out and it's on two pieces of paper. And this is what we mean by the overlap. That is just a white border that is placed around. Now, if you choose to print this without the overlap, you can risk cutting off some of the actual image. And this pretty much works in multiple softwares doing it this way. All right, so. 
to measure your cup, all you are going to do, and I find using a tape measure is easiest, so you want to wrap the tape measure around, and that's why this is easier because that tape measure can actually wrap around. So you wanna wrap it around, and as you'll see, it's not quite 10, but I did give it um, a little extra that works best for me, and then the length of it. So that is how you measure your tumbler to know exactly what your width and height should be, all right? So you do wanna make sure that you clean off your tumbler with alcohol and let it dry prior to placing your image on top. So I have heat tape that we're going to be using. And now we are just going to kind of place this here. I do wanna go ahead and just cut off the edges. I'm not going to cut off the entire or cut out the entire design because I still need to use the top part in order for me to line it up correctly. So as you're cutting, you want to make sure you are getting a nice clean edge. So if you need to use a paper slicer, I would recommend that, but you don't want any of that white left onto those edges because that white will show up on the tumbler. All right. So you want to make sure you get all of those white edges off. So we're going to do the same thing for this side. All right. So here we go. And you'll see why. And you want to make sure you get any of those little white extra pieces of paper that you cut off. You want to get those out of the way. So now you guys will see why I left part of the image on top. So I just want to see how I'm going to piece this together. So I think I'm going to put this on top of this side. So what I'm going to do next is I am just going to cut this edge of the paper off. And again, you want to make sure, because this is the part that you're going to be piecing together. So you want to make sure that there are no extra white border or that, that entire white area of that little strip is cut off. All right. And it looks like we're, we're doing pretty good here. So now we're going to get ready to piece this together. All right, y'all. So I'm just going to kind of turn it to the side for me. You don't have to turn it to the side, but this is going to help me for now. And then I'll flip it back around in a second. So I am just piecing this together and matching it up. And so if you still have a little bit of that white uh, border on there, you will be able to see it. But as we are looking now, it's looking pretty, it's looking pretty good. And so I am just putting it together and you want to make sure you kind of have it all together really, really good. And so right here, as you guys see, this is going to kind of help me like in guiding me like to shift it because you want it to look, you don't want it to look like you actually pieced it together. Okay. So you want to make sure you reduce any gaps that may be there. All right here, it's looking pretty good. But that mushroom, okay. Now this is looking almost perfect. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape the top and then we are just going to tape it that way. All right. So now that I have a piece together, I'm going to get a little piece of tape and I am just going to tape this down. And then I am also going to tape this bottom down. So we're not done taping. So now what I'm just gonna do is grab this and flip it over to the back. 
And I forgot to mention, we are using my ink, Dynamic Ink. You can find that in my Etsy shop. And we are also going to be using a sub sublimation paper. And that uh, a link will be listed below in the description. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to tape the seam down. We are just taping the seam down. And as I'm taping it down, I'm pushing the tape, like just pushing it just to try to flatten it out as much as possible because we don't want that seam to really affect how it's how it's pressed. And also, you don't want any air to get in that seam. So that is why I'm kind of taping it very closely together. That tape is overlapping. I don't want any air to get underneath. So I'm just making sure that it's nice and flat. So what we're going to do next is we are going to just kind of like grab a squeegee, just push down because you want it as flat as possible. All right. And so this is what we have so far. Okay. And so it looks really, really good. What we're going to do now is we are just going to cut off this bottom part. So if you don't want to waste heat tape by applying it here, you can just use regular tape, but that's what we use. So now I'm just cutting these strips off. All right, y'all, so we are done with that. And so now it's time for us to wrap our tumbler. And so I am just going to place this here and we are going to wrap it all right so i want to kind of flush this down so what we're going to do is i'm just going to kind of get it that way so as you all see this now touches the rim and then we still have that little space at the bottom but that's kind of how i I sized it like I sized it right there before it got to that hump. I did not want to uh, have the paper wrap over the hump. Okay, so with this being flushed down, what I'm doing now is I'm just making sure that it's touching the table. And so I am going to pull, like I am pulling this, y'all. You don't want any air underneath your image. So now I'm just pulling it as tight as I can, pulling it as tight as I can. And so as I'm pulling it, I'm holding it still. All right. And so we're going to pull it and then I am going to take my tape and I'm just going to wrap it around the bottom just like that. And you can go ahead and remove if your tumblers have this on the bottom, you can go ahead and remove it. I'm not going to worry about it now. All right, so now we have it lined up. And so I'm still pulling it, still, still pulling it, all right? And so before I tape the rest of this seam, I am going to go ahead and pull this tight and then tape the top part. So I'm just gonna take this and wrap this around really tightly. All right, so this is looking good. I feel it, it feels tight to me. So I'm going to continue to tape the seam. So even though it's here and this part is on, like the, it's taped down, I am still going to, as I'm taping, I'm still gonna be taping, I am going to keep pulling this tighter. I don't want any air to get underneath at all. You can even take your tape and like just pull, going in the same direction as the wrap is and just pulling it just to make sure that you're getting it nice and tight. All right, so that's what I'm doing right here. But I'm also still going to take more tape and just and seal that because you don't want any air getting underneath there. As you see, it's still like lifted up. Even though it's nice and tight on here, there's still air that can get underneath and you don't want any air to get underneath. 
You don't want this to look like it was pieced together, right? So we are just going to go ahead and keep taping this down. And when we apply the shrink wrap, that is going to help us, you know, apply that extra pressure that's needed. All right, so here I'm just pressing this down. This is what I do, um, whether it's a 20 ounce tumbler or a 30 ounce tumbler. I still just press it down just to make sure that it's nice and tight on there. And so as you guys see, we have two seams. We have this seam and then we have the other seam. So we have the piece together seam and then we have the seam where the two ends meet. And here I'm just pressing it down. All right, y'all, so now we're all wrapped and if you want or if you feel more comfortable, it's probably best for you to go ahead and tape down the rim of your tumbler and also tape down the bottom of your tumbler. All right, you can tape it around the bottom. That protects it a little bit more from air possibly getting underneath, okay? So now we're gonna get ready to shrink wrap our tumbler and this shrink wrap is also inside of my Etsy shop if you are interested. And you will need a heat gun to apply the shrink wrap. Also make sure you have some heat gloves. And so what I like to do is I like to hit the seams first with the heat because I really want those areas to be very, very tight. So I don't know if that really helps me hitting it first, but that's usually what I do. It makes me feel better if it doesn't really help. All right, y'all, so now we are about to place our tumbler inside of the convection oven. And this is a Hamilton Beach Excel rotisserie oven. We are going to be pressing this at 370 degrees for about five minutes. So I do have an oven thermometer inside and that is telling me exactly what the temperature is inside of the oven. In addition, I have a silicone mat at the bottom of the oven because if this shrink wrap makes contact with that metal, this shrink wrap is going to melt. No matter what shrink wrap you use, if the shrink wrap makes direct contact with the metal, it will definitely melt, all right? And you don't want that type of mess on your hands. So we are just going to place this in once it's at our desired temperature. All right, so now it's time for us to place our tumbler inside of the oven. As you see that top part, I kind of overdid it with the heat gun, so don't overdo it with heat gun. And so I am going to place this. I know some people rotate their tumblers. I do not rotate my tumbler at all. All right, so I just let it stay in here for the allotted time and we'll be ready to take it out. All right, y'all, so it's been five minutes and I can actually see the image peeping through our paper. So it is time for us to unwrap. All right, y'all, so now it's time for us to unwrap our tumbler and I am going to remove the shrink wrap. Uh oh, some of that tape is already coming off. I don't want the tape to come off just yet. Uh oh, it's like it's stuck. To the shrink wrap that I want to. Look at that shrink wrap with all that ink on it. So that ink went through, y'all. All right, so first we are going to undo the seam. And so this is the seam, and that's the middle seam. 
So this isn't the part where we piece it together. This is the actual seam, and this is what we have. So this is the actual seam right here. And this wasn't a, a seamless wrap, so it's not gonna, like it doesn't piece together perfectly. Oh, it kind of came off a little bit. So I'm going to flip this around and show y'all what that middle seam looks like. And this is what we have. This is where we piece it together, y'all. This is where we pieced it together. I do see some roller marks that I didn't see before in here. But other than that, y'all, this looks pretty amazing. And so I'm trying, I'm, okay, I see, I see where the seam is. So we pieced it together. This is the area that we pieced it together. And this is where that mushroom is. This is the area where we pieced it together. Right here. It was right here by the mushroom. And I can kind of see it a little bit because I was a little bit, off. I don't know if you guys can really tell, but I can tell right here because I was a little bit off about right there. I should have pulled it up just a little bit, but it looks great. And this is what we have. Maybe here I could put a name here. All right, y'all. So we are all done with subbing this 30 ounce tumbler using our Epson EcoTank 2750, which is not a wide format printer and it only prints eight and a half inches wide. And so that's what makes it difficult for us to be able to sub and do full wraps on 30 ounce tumblers, but it can totally be done. You might wanna practice this first on a smaller item, just so that you can practice piecing together and slicing and that sort of thing. But y'all, it can totally be done. You can get excellent, excellent, excellent results. And I am very pleased with the outcome of this tumbler as I usually am. Now, problems that may arise is, is that if you do not piece this together correctly, it can shift. Uh, if you don't tape this down really, really good, you can get air that gets into that area. And that's one major problem that I've had in the past is that air can get into the where you're, you're piecing it together and you don't want that. All right, so that's one thing that you definitely want to consider. But y'all, if you are interested in doing this, you can totally do this. I hope this was helpful. I posted a video on TikTok showing this and I had several people asking how to get this done. And so I wanted to show you all step-by-step step how I sub onto a 30 ounce tumbler using my Epson Eco Tank. 2750 but it does take some work y'all it does if you enjoyed this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up also make sure to hit that subscribe button if you are not a subscriber i would love it if you would stick around in addition head over to facebook instagram and tiktok and join me there as well but that's going to be it for today y'all thank you all so much for watching until next time Thank you.